Welcome NFL football fans. It's that time again. Time for another edition of NFL Football Talk. I'm your host, Charles E. Smith Jr. This is an Inside Sports Production presented by Humanican Media in association with Pop Culture Cosmos. And here we are. We're all the way down to Super Bowl 53 is upon us. The New England Patriots going to take on the Los Angeles Rams on February 3rd. That'll be 3.30 Pacific time. And we'll see who is the champion of Super Bowl 53. So let's go ahead and recap everything. We'll give our game predictions. Let's get right into it. As you know, I don't work alone here. I do work with the help of the very, very best. So always proud to introduce my main man here, my co-host. He is a proud graduate of Rutgers University and someone many of you already follow on Twitter at Chris L Sports. And if not, you should be. He is always my favorite East Coast intellectual from somewhere in a beautiful location in Southern California. None other than Chris Lardieri. Hey, Chris, what's up out there, man? Charles, as always, great intro. Thank you. I believe it just seemed like a mere month or two ago that the season started. Uh, it wasn't. It was now over four months ago. And <laughs> here we are looking down the barrel of Super Bowl slash Big Game Sunday. Yeah. There we go. So Super Bowl 53. And, you know, there was one thing when – Honestly, I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit down when I found out the Patriots were going to another Super Bowl, and this will be the ninth Super Bowl of the Brady Belichick era. But then I looked at it in the overall sense, and what it comes down to is the Patriots, they're always involved in interesting Super Bowls. I mean, just interesting. There's never a blowout involved. Uh, all the games normally go down to the, at least the final quarter, a lot of times the final drive. And if we look at it, their largest margin of victory so far in the eight Super Bowls in the Brady-Belichick era, largest margin of victory was six points. And that was in Super Bowl 51 when they beat Atlanta. Their largest margin of defeat was eight points. That was last year. Overall, eight Super Bowls played. Their point differential is only at a plus five. So it looks like they basically could have lost or won every Super Bowl they were in. So all of you who are... Kind of disappointed that New England is in another Super Bowl, third in a row, four and five years. I know we're all tired of it, but this has all the makings of a classic. Absolutely, and I, I think that's the, the one upside of the Patriots being, as you said, uh, the, the Falcons was an overtime game. Even right. though the point differential in the Eagles game was large, it was a great game for the last few minutes. Um, the, the thing with them is that, yeah, they've got some of the dynasty, but a couple bounces either way, even in their losses to two losses to the Giants. Yeah. For instance, um, this is a team that could have easily won all their games or lost a heck of a lot more. So <laughs> I think, uh, moral of the story is Rams fans, I just go on a limb and say your team will be in this game one way or the other. Yeah, they are, and it's all about uh, really when I look at the matchups, I think it's about that Rams front seven. When I look at Dante Fowler, Domikong Su, and then saving the best for last, Aaron Donald. If they can get that push, get a good push up front and get Brady off his spot there, I think they'd cause some problems for him. Definitely. That's one thing the Chiefs didn't do. Brady went untouched. And when the Patriots have had problems in the postseason and Super Bowls, you look at the Giants with uh, just – Tuck and Jason Pierre-Paul the second time around, previously mm -hmm. Strahan and Tuck. Uh, even the Eagles got enough pressure on him to make him feel uncomfortable. When the Falcons did have a lead that they inevitably choked away, they were hitting Brady, so that's right. the key. you got to knock him on his back. He does not like, uh, not like getting hit, to say the least, especially at his age. Yeah, that's true. And also, I think the Patriots, they do tend to play a – a little bit more conservative in the Super Bowl, because let's look at, and giving all due respect to that Giants defense led by Michael Strahan at Super Bowl 42, when they beat the previously undefeated Patriots for that season, the final score is 17-14 to 14 Giants, and the Patriots had Randy Moss on the team. Remember, they were just rolling up points in every game and got to the Super Bowl and uh, only managed to find the end zone twice. Yep, and Charles, you know, we're, we're looking at this new era of football, but uh, once again, defense won a championship. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so as far as NFL news, and now everybody, we wait for the 3.30 kickoff, and I know you got all your food out, anticipation and everything, so remember, and this is, I, I like the other sports industries, sports leagues getting on board here, in case you don't want to sit through, I don't know, five hours of pregame leading up to the Super Bowl. 
Remember, there are three morning games in the NBA and three morning games in the NHL. So pre- plenty of stuff to uh, kind of keep you busy all the way up to kickoff. Yeah, a lot of nonsense. I mean, Charles, we're hardcore football fans, but we won't watch this stuff. It's a lot of fluff and time to kill. I mean, I remember back in the day when there were two and three hour pregame shows for the Super Bowl, and we thought that was long. So uh, <laughs> pretty much nowadays, I'll uh, I'll watch some highlights of the great old Super Bowls on NFL Network or ESPN or wherever they're showing them these days. And then- right, that's one of the best things of this week is that NFL Network does do the 30-minute vignettes of the old Super Bowls. And it's, those are really well done. Well done, well narrated, uh, even without John Facenda. <laughs> but, uh, that's the greatest. Yeah, the greatest. okay. So before we get into just breaking down the nuts and bolts and giving our picks for the week here, uh, Mr. Lardieri, you have some words of wisdom for all the football fans out there? Uh, I sure do. The NFL kind of floated the idea to say that they're looking to change the rule and coaches will have a limited number of opportunities to challenge, uh, I guess, let's say subjective calls like pass interference, <laughs> which is great and all. But, uh, yeah, got to wonder, why are they even bringing up this rule when they wouldn't even acknowledge in the first place that there was an issue with the Roby Coleman pass interference? But uh, they managed to find him for a helmet-to-helmet hit. So they're all but admitting they blew the call on, on two <laughs> levels, but they've yet to admit. It. So uh, good job, Roger Goodell and crew. Uh, you had a nice year rebounding in popularity. You had some great games, some exciting teams, and up-and-coming players. But uh, they just cannot seem to get out of their own way. I, I didn't watch any excerpts of his press conference today. Frankly, I probably just don't have the patience for it. But I'd like to read some of the analysis on that, and hopefully some reporters took him to task for that. Well, interesting, too, you talk about that play, and we all know with less than two minutes to play, Roby Coleman just uh, plowing through the Saints receiver, Lewis, there. That that probably would have given the Saints the game. But uh, And they find him for the helmet-to-helmet, but, you know, and still the P.I., which is the real issue there, even though they want to say helmet-to-helmet, concussions, safer league, all this kind of stuff, they did manage to skirt the issue very cleverly. I, I like that you brought that up. Yeah, no, Charles, you know me. I'm not going to let anything like that get passed. But, uh, but what do I know? I'm, I'm not a cheerleader for the league. I just the show. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so here we go. Let's break down Super Bowl 53, get down to the picks here. The Patriots, and as it stands here, we're doing the show just a few days before the Super Bowl here. And uh, Patriots, two-and-a-half-point favorite. The over-under is 56.5. Uh, interesting with the line here, because it opened with the Rams as a one-point favorite, quickly went to the Patriots as a two-point favorite the next day. A day later, it was the Patriots a 2.5, and it has stayed steady ever since then. So I guess that's where they found that the money started coming in evenly was Patriots at 2.5. as a 2.5 favorite. Right. Okay, so... What do you think here? Two well-scoring offenses. The Patriots were fourth overall. Rams were second overall, I believe. And keys to victory, like I said, I think that the Rams, they got to get a good push up front. We talked about that with Sue and Dante and Dante Fowler and Aaron Donald. Also, I think, uh, Nickel Roby Coleman, you got to realize that you were given a second shot at life here. And I think this is going to be one of the other keys is you got to make sure that you earn this trip. And also, Marcus Peters, you've got to stop freelancing. Stay in your lane. Do your job. Aqib Talib, you're the one back there trying to stabilize that defensive backfield. Make sure everybody just does their job. Don't give up any big plays. Absolutely. And uh, I, I think at points in the game, the Rams did that against Drew Brees in the NFC Championship, but they are not going to be able to slip up at all with this team, with Tom Brady, with Gronkowski, who looks like he's been resurrected for what might be one final run. But uh, my analysis, uh, you hit the nail on the head. The defense is going to have to win this game. If they double-team Aaron Donald, it's going to take a foul or a sue to make big plays. They're going to have to make a turnover. I, I think, too, the, the Chiefs, they got 
really, they got an interception in that game that kept them in it. Brady threw an interception earlier in the first half that uh, could have been a touchdown. It essentially took points off the board and gave the Chiefs the ball back. Did not have the greatest game. There was later in the game there was that interception, but uh, as we all know, the uh, the infamous penalty that they'll be rehashing in Kansas City for God bless D four. Yeah, I mean, uh, poor guy. Uh, apparently, what I've heard is the Pat's left tackle was a little bit behind the line and could have easily been called for an illegal formation, but it wasn't meant to be. But look, Brady uh, has been erratic all year. If the Rams can force him into a turnover and or they hit him and he gets uncomfortable and we, we, know, he, we know he gets hot when he gets hit. We even saw it in that Falcons Super Bowl. Uh, I think they've got a shot to win this game. On the flip side, I don't know which Todd Gurley is going to show up. I've heard every theory in the book from the guy is pretty much hurt and will need surgery after the season to, well, uh, McVay was essentially using him as a decoy against the Saints and mixing in C.J. Anderson. I'm not sure. But on that side of the ball, I think Jared Goff is going to be the guy who, who will win the Super Bowl for the Rams. If they do end up winning, he, it's going to be on his shoulders. Kind of been up and down down the stretch. I think he played well enough in these two playoff games. And uh, frankly, I'm not as impressed in the Patriots' defense. Uh, Pat Mahomes really lit them up in the second half, and for for a coin flip, could have easily won that game. Um, going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to pick the Rams, not just <laughs> because my son's a huge fan. I take my kids to training camp every year. The players are great. It's wonderful to watch McVay at work, but i uh, got to tell you, when I took them this August, my father-in-law down to UC Irvine, I told both of them, we could be looking at a Super Bowl contender here, and I don't normally say that sort of thing, but that's how good they look just in practice. I'm going to stick with it. I think the Patriots are, I don't want to say they're paper lions, but uh, the <laughs> fact that everyone thinks they're the greatest three weeks after they had them written off for dead and thought the Chargers are going to run all over them. Um, <laughs> I think the Rams do have the defensive talent to win this game. Like we've said, it's a Patriots Super Bowl. It's going to be close, but uh, right. I go out on a limb. I'm going to go with the Rams in the upset, and uh, L.A. finally gets its first NFL title in, what, 35 years it'll be. Since the, it was the 85 of... The 85 Raiders, correct? Wasn't that? It was, that it, it was the, yeah, it was, uh, 80, it was technically January of 84, so yeah. Oh, okay, 84, yeah. right. 83 LA Raiders upset <laughs> the vaunted Washington Redskins in the fun bunch. I remember Marcus Allen reversing field and taking that ball up the middle. I remember that. So, yeah, you know, I think the whole Todd Gurley situation, even if he was, you know, I mean, decoy or whatever, is he only ran, I think he only had 10 yards against the Saints, which is interesting. So, even if he's was injured a little bit, and hopefully he will have healed by now, but I think it'd be a great story if C.J. Anderson wound up, you know, coming to the team late and wound up being the linchpin that really uh, cemented the Super Bowl victory for the Rams. But one other thing on the Rams, the defensive side, is the Patriots. It's one thing to knock Brady off a spot, but remember they can get a power running game going with Sony Michelle. The Rams are going to have to be careful of that as well. Uh, Gronk. We talk about him being on his last legs, last legs, but he's still a devastating blocker when they when they go to that run game. That is a load to run behind. So uh, the Rams are going to have to be careful with that up front as well. It's it's always easy to pick. You know, you can say the Patriots because it always comes down to two or three plays that they're better than the opposition. But I'm going to go ahead. I like the Rams as well in this game. I think they'll go ahead and do it. And when they have that parade in downtown L.A. That is going to be something to see. Hey, no disrespect to the Patriots, and but the Patriots, I think the reason why people, we look at sports dynasties, and one thing is, one of the best things about sports dynasties is when they're over, you get to kind of look at it in the rearview mirror and realize how good or bad it wasn't, and we compare it to other dynasties and that sport and other sports, and the Patriots keep depriving us of this, of looking at their dynasty in the past tense. So people are kind of anxious to write them off and say, this is the end. Now we can move on to the next thing. And the Patriots, since their people have been proclaiming the end, they've gone to four of the last five Super Bowls and three straight. And each season, each of the last three or four seasons, after about, what, four games in, someone says, this is the end. And what, where do they wind up? In the Super Bowl yet again. <laughs> but I'm going Rams in this one. I like it. Well, I, mean, I know we've had our ups and downs this year, but it's good we come together at the end and we agree. And, and darn it, I, I hope we're right, frankly. <laughs> 
either that or we're both going down together, right? We're going down with the ship. <laughs> That's right, like the Billy Joel song, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there we go, Super Bowl 53. We're both going with the Rams. And uh, hopefully it'll just be a, a great game. That's what I'm looking for. I want it to be great. I want it to be competitive. And I really hope the Rams can pull this thing out. I'll be watching the game wherever I decide to watch it. I will be wearing my Eric Dickerson jersey while I watch it because I'm an old school type of dude. So remember, every week here, the show is NFL Football Talk. It's an Inside Sports production. You can follow me on Twitter at The Inside Sports. Follow Chris on Twitter at Chris L Sports. So before we sign off here, before the big game, uh, Chris, any final words? Yeah, two two quick thoughts. You know, I had a nice run with the Gamblers Delight and my underdog theme this year. Um, I want to kind of asterisk it and say if you are going to put uh, your money where your mouth is, like I think the Rams <laughs> will win, um, if you are going to take the points, uh, I would look for a, a book or online venue that's giving at least three points. Right now there are few that have Rams plus three. A lot still have them plus two and a half. Uh Get that extra half a point at the very least if it's a close game, and history says it will be, and you push, worst case, you get your money back. <laughs> if you really feel convinced about the Rams, you want to go and, and play a gambler's delight, uh, I suggest you do the money line. I think there's a little better value there. A couple sports books in Vegas have them plus 125. For every uh, dollar you bet, you get back an extra dollar. You get back dollar twenty five on that initial $1 bet, so... Uh, I'm going to go off into the sunset. Those will be my my last uh, Gambler's Delight recommendations. And then on a personal note, every year, uh, my employer, Wells Fargo Asset Management, Athletic Investors, we write a research paper on the NFL. We run teams. We've got a quantitative calculation where we, we come up with uh, each team's return on investment. And believe it or not, the best investment in wagering this year, I'm hypothetically betting 100 bucks each week for 16 weeks on, on – every NFL team was the Buffalo Bills. And when we dug into the numbers, the reason was is that the Bills upset the Vikings in week three. They were, I believe, a 17 or 17.5-point underdog. And they basically, their proverbial return shot up so much that they ended up finishing the season with the, the highest rate of return in the mid-40%. So off those stats, we say, hey, whoever did really well in the regular season, there's going to be a mean reversion. And the team, there are two teams playing in the playoffs. We picked the one with the lower alpha. That's our reversion, as it were. And uh, we've got an 82 record in the playoffs. And in the Super Bowl, we've got the Patriots have an actual negative 5.5 alpha because, frankly, uh, at least in wagering markets, they underperformed this year versus the Rams with a, a, a 9% alpha, which is a you know, typically would be pretty low for a Super Bowl team. Normally we pick them, but we say uh, based on the point spread, we like the Pats at the, at the time of publication. The Pats are only giving two points, which is good for them. But uh, one of our analysts at the firm came up with a uh, machine learning algorithm, a, a new model this year for the first time, just to kind of see how the the man, as it were, uh, compared to the machine, and the machine like the Rams. So, if anything, <laughs> I guess we're we're hedging hedging our bets, and uh, uh, one model pick one, and one pick the other. But our, our primary model, which uh, has been ten and five over the last fifteen years, likes the Pats. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, follow me on Twitter at Chris L Sports. Uh, we're in the process of promoting this, and there are a number of media outlets and finance and sports that are looking to pick it up. So uh, if they do, be sure to post it there, and you, you can follow it there. Thanks. There we go. And, you know, it just goes to show that the Terminator series is prophetic because, you know, the final battle will be man versus the machine. But, hey, i got to say something about taking taking the Rams on the money line. And here's what you got to be careful with money line bets because, yeah, we know that the return is a little bit higher. You maybe get a 25% higher return. Honestly, I would rather bet just a little bit more and take the points. <laughs> Putting money on the money line is, uh, it's just kind of dicey. If you're going to bet $100 to return 125 you know, just go ahead and bet 125 so you get the same return and take the two and a half points. Just hedge your bet a little bit. I think that, uh, hey, that's just fool's gold, honestly. I look at the money line as fool's gold, unless it's something ridiculous where the return is going to be three times or whatever, which means it'd be a huge upset. But, you know, those those 125s, thing, eh, just leave it alone. Take the points. 
Yeah, I get you. But if you're a wage, if you're wagering, like, I think the Rams are, win, are going to win. I think the value's there, and, and here's why. And, and it's not in the playoffs, and we saw it in the Pats Falcons Super Bowl. If this game goes to overtime and the Pats get the ball first, you know they're not looking to kick a field goal. They're looking to score that touchdown. So uh, your push turns into an outright loss after your team plays a hard spot <laughs> five minutes or so. So you know, I, I will qualify it. That's only if you uh, the Rams are going to win. I think you get a little more bang for your buck there. If you're not certain, you know me. I always like getting points. And uh, right, who knows with the with the the way the the odd number of point differentials we have now, given the two-point conversion and the number of missed extra points, Mm -hmm. it could easily be a two-point game. Yeah, that's true. So there you go. All right, folks. So thank you for listening. Remember, NFL Football Talk, Charles E. Smith Jr., Chris Lardieri, bring it to you every week. We'll be back next week to uh, give you, in the aftermath of the Super Bowl, give our thoughts. And thank you for listening. So for Mr. Chris Lardieri, this is Charles E. Smith Jr. We'll see everybody next week. Enjoy Super Bowl 53.